Let's go with the message. Been a long time since I preached on Moses. I mean, I'm talking a long time. <laughs> we got to go back some. And I mentioned him every while, every once in a while, but a little series called Mo Momentum. Can you say that with me? Mo Momentum. It said of Moses that he was the greatest leader of all time. Moses, other than Jesus, of course. And, but as far as leadership and getting people and dealing with people and going before a king and dealing with the things he dealt with and delivering a whole nation through the Red Sea and putting up with the crazy people he had to put up with. Remember all that? And then all of them dying in the wilderness. And all, You remember all that? This was the greatest leader ever. If we're going to learn something about leadership, we need some momentum. Amen? Come on. Let's go get some momentum for leadership. I want to go up in my, you know, my leadership skills. I want to be a better leader. Say that with me. I want to be a better leader. Some people think, well, I'm not a leader. Everybody lead. Everybody has the capacity to lead. I believe that. I believe everyone has the capacity to lead. Some are going to be up top. Some people are going to you know, be over a number of people and things like that. Some people aren't, but everybody can lead in some capacity. And that's the beautiful story about Moses' life. He's the one you'd have never thought would have been the leader. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? So let's look at this message and see what we're going to find today. Start out in Hebrews. Going to end up going to the Old Testament, though. That's where we're going to spend our time. But the book of Hebrews, by faith, Moses. If you want a little synopsis, a little quick breakdown of Moses' life, it's right here in Hebrews 11. By faith, Moses, when he was born, that's what we're going to talk about today. He was hid for three months of his parents, especially his mama, okay, and his sister. Because they saw he was a proper child, and they also didn't want him dead, okay. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who's invisible. This is a great leader. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should kill them too. Amen. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. Now, that's, a, that's some doing right there. As by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, were what? Drown. Amen. The man, Moses. We want to learn how God bless this man, what can we learn in leadership? And by the way, everything you learn in leadership ain't positive. There's going to be some negatives in this man's life. And we need to learn from the negatives how to, to do the right thing and to overcome. So we'll see it. Now, one of the greatest leaders, if not the greatest man leader of all time, Moses. You ought to look that up and Google the greatest leaders and see how high Moses comes. Amen? Whew, Crazy. If there's one thing we desperately need today in families and in churches and in our country, what is it? It's what? It's leadership. To be honest with you, Donald J. Trump's going to be president Friday. You know that, right? Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. You need to support your president. This is Gary Clark talking. This is me talking. This is me talking. Election's over, okay? Say Need to get on board. This is our country. Amen. This is the, this is the, this is America. Amen. Say, we don't always get everything we want. All right. But, but the people have spoken. It is what it is. He's our president. But you know how that man won? Here's how he won. Things in Washington are broken. These people are stupid. They don't know what they're doing. And you know what? He won. <laughs> he won. That's what he said. The borders are sieve. You heard him. The borders are sieve. They don't know what they're doing. We make bad deals, you know. And he offered something. You know what he offered? Leadership. That's what, he, that's, what he, that's what he ran on, leadership. All kinds of flaws. He's got all kinds of issues. You know, all kinds of struggles he's had. 
He's certainly not a role model on, uh, you know, and what you want, how your son, how I want your young man to behave. You know, hey, maybe that's been changing. Amen. That's what we pray for. Doesn't it say pray for your leaders and pray for those that have the over authority over you? We ought to pray for him. Amen. But the one thing it looks like he might have is leadership. He just might have leadership. Wouldn't that be nice? Say. All right. Wouldn't that be nice? Amen. I think that's what he ran on. He ran on saying, I'll be a real leader. We're going to get things done. My father-in-law was my pastor for many, many years. He's in heaven now. And God gave me another father-in-law, Don. And I love you. You matter to me. Okay? My father-in-law that's in heaven, he was a great pastor. A great pastor. And I loved him. He taught me far more than any university ever taught me. He was incredible. He taught me to love the Word of God. He taught me to love Jesus. He taught me to love Florida. Amen. But mama taught me to love people. That's what mama taught me. Amen. But my father-in-law would say this. He would say to his staff of about 30, he would say, do something even if it's wrong. He could not stand people sitting around and doing nothing, twiddling their thumbs. He hated it. Amen. He hated it. And what he was trying to say was get out there and lead. Even if you screw it up sometime, get out there and do something and be a leader. Amen. Y'all hearing me? I got sideways, but this is important when we start a new series. Let's go with it. So we need, Roger's going to push us now. We need Mo what? And who better to learn from than Moses? But we can't learn from Moses if they won't know Moses. And there wouldn't have been no Moses if it weren't for Mo's mama. Amen. So let's look today at Mo's mama. And maybe from Mo's mama, we get us some momentum. How many would say this, knowing me like you know me, but you didn't know my mother, but you know her through me now. How many would say Gary Clark is what he is today, good, bad, or ugly, because of his mama? Wouldn't you agree with that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the mama some credit today. She's in heaven having church with us this morning. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Come on. So let's learn. Let's learn from some ladies today. Let's learn from some women today. I love that. At Fellowship Church, I'm going to tell you right now, if it was not for the women of Fellowship Church, we would not have the success that we have. We would not be who we are. I love the women of this church. The women of this church are powerful. They love me. I look out there and I see you. You're beautiful. You help me. You send me text of encouragement. I'll preach a message some Sunday morning. Here's Julie Martin sending me a text. I love you, Pastor. That was a great message. Amen. When I was hurting, when I was down, when I felt like I was nothing, when I felt like I'd been abandoned, lost, whew, that was hard. It was women I would spend evenings with. Women in our church. I'd go out to dinner with several of them. I'd call it preacher's night out. Ladies night out with the preacher. And we would go out and eat. And they would talk to me. And they would pour into my life. They would tell me things before I ever would get married again. I wanted to hear from women. I was broken. I was hurt. Felt lost. You know what I'm feeling. How many would say I felt that way, preacher? I know what that feels like. Amen? And I learned from the ladies. Uh, and it was fun, too. I had the biggest time. And hearing things they said, I can't believe they talked to me like that. But I love having that kind of church. Where you matter, ladies. And I love you. I love you. I was, I was, it was great this morning. I was able to tell a woman in the first service, I love her. She lost her husband a few weeks ago. They were married like 59 years She's beautiful. She's decided to stay here in Inglewood. That's so hard. She's been with him since she was 17. And I loved on her this morning. I said, you know what? You can come sit in my office. And you and me will sit there. I said, or if you want to go out to eat, you and me will go out for dinner. How about that? I have zero problem with that. Y'all hear me? Yes or no? I love the women in this church. You're powerful. You're awesome. And I, I appreciate it. We're going to learn something. We're going to learn something from these women I've learned from you. Here we go with the Bible. The children of Israel were fruitful because that's what God said. Be fruitful and multiply the earth. And boy, then them, them Israelites had babies. And they increased abundantly and they multiplied and they waxed exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. 
Israelites everywhere. And there rose up a, a new king over Egypt, which didn't know Joseph. Now, Joseph was a man of God. He also was an Israelite. And God elevated him to a place of great leadership. But time goes by. And the influence that Joseph had had was fading. And a new king rose up who didn't know Joseph, who didn't know Joseph's God. And so this new Egyptian king said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we are. They're taking over this place. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falls out a war, if there's ever a war in this place, they go and join also with our enemies and fight against us. Right inside of our own country. So get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them, say it with me, taskmasters to afflict them. So the children of Israel in Egypt are being afflicted with burdens. And they built Pharaoh treasure cities. You know, most of those things that you see today in antiquity, you that have gone to Egypt, most of those things were built by slaves. And they built for Pharaoh treasured cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they went home and made babies. I guess if you're having a bad day, we can have a good night. Aren't you glad I didn't write the Bible? It'd be colorful, wouldn't it? <laughs> and they were grieved. They were grieved because of the children of Israel. What are we going to do? And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve even harder with more rigor. We'll wear them out. They'll be too tired to fool around in the evening. And they made their lives what? I hate this word. Bitter. Would you say this with me? I don't want. Say it with me. I don't want. To ever be better. And I know many of you probably in this room are listening to us today from radio to internet. Many of you probably are bitter. That's something Gary Clark never wants to be. You hear me today? Yes or no? And that's what he was trying to do. The king was trying to get them to the place where they griped, they moaned, they groaned. Poor pitiful old me. I don't ever want to be that way. Bitter. He was trying to make them bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field and in their service. And when they made them serve, it was with what? Rigor. You don't even hear that word anymore. Rigor. Do you? Wow. So a powerful king. A powerful king. But could you say that next part with me? But what? One more time. Can we do it one more time? By the way, I'm feeling better. I am feeling better. I'm just telling you, I've been sick and I'm feeling better. I decided I'm going to eat and get heavy and I'm feeling better. I'm telling you that right now. I'm feeling better. Come on. I am fat and happy. Here we go. Come on. And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives. So he tried everything he could. They're still procreating. So he talked to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shipra, and the other was Pua, and I'm doing my best. He said, when you do the office of midwife, when you go to help these women have their babies, the Hebrew women, and you see them upon the stools, if it be a son, kill him. If it be a daughter, she can live. Boy, what? That's evil, ain't it? Shipra and Pua feared God more than they feared the king. Say that with me. Shipra and Pua feared God more than they feared the Are we learning anything about leadership yet? You just keep listening. You might learn something. Grab it if it comes out. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt had commanded them. But, he, but they saved the men, children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives. And women are funny. I'm going to tell you that right now. 
He called for these midwives. He said unto them, why have you done this thing? Why have you saved the men's children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. They're lively. And they're delivered ere the midwives come into them. Boy, women are creative, aren't they? Say. Are we learning anything? Say. I mean, I mean, before we ever get there, the baby's done popped out. What can we do? Come on. God's response to two powerful women and what they did. Therefore, God dealt with the midwives. And the, dealt well with the midwives. Well with the midwives. And the people did what? Multiplied. And they started getting stronger and stronger and stronger. How many would say some hard adversity in your life? Some tough times. I mean, it was hard as nails. You didn't think you'd make it. But it has made you a stronger person. Let me see your hand. We don't like it, do we? That's what was happening to the children of Israel. It came to pass because the midwives feared God. That he made them what? Houses. These women are being prosperous for doing the right thing. Wicked King Pharaoh's response. And Pharaoh charged all his people, not just the midwives, all his people, all his people, all his people, everybody, everywhere. Every son that's born, cast into the river. Okay? Midwives don't want to listen. Okay. Kill them all. Oh. Rough, huh? Keep looking. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. I'm going to put my two cents in here. Pop it up, Raj. This is not leadership. To kill babies is not leadership. Did you hear me? Women, you did not learn from the Bible to kill babies from the Bible. If you did learn it from the Bible, you learned it from a wicked king. You didn't learn it from the Lord. Doesn't matter what culture says or society says or even the Supreme Court says. If you want leadership, we're learning today. You can see things in the Bible that ain't leadership and you can hook on to it if you want to. But that's not godly. It's not right. Killing children is not leadership. Did you hear me? Yes or no? It's not leadership. It's evil to do that. It was evil then. The midwife said, no, we're not doing it. They didn't do it. So the wicked king told everybody else to kill the men, children in the, in the river. Pharaoh did it. This is a quote of mine. I'm going to be famous one day, but I don't want to be famous for this quote, but it's a good quote. Here it is. I wrote it this week in my office. Pharaoh did it to destroy the children of God. Herod did it to destroy the son of God. And Planned Parenthood and abortionists do it today to destroy the image of God. Do you hear me? I don't want to line up with Pharaoh and Herod. Amen. Say. Guys, ladies, men, we don't want to do that. Yes or no? Say. To kill the children of God, to kill the son of God. And why today? Why? In my view, to destroy the image of God. It is not a child. It is a child. You hear me say? You are not fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. In the what? In the what? Image of who? God. Psalm says, 139, for thou hast possessed my reins. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul down deep knows that well. You cannot look at a baby in this process and say, it's just a blob of tissue. That's not a baby. You, a person in their right mind cannot say that. Are y'all listening to me? Say. 
Now, a warped mind can say that. And we get that way. We get warped and bent. That's not God's plan, God's will. My substance was not hid from you, the Bible says. That little baby, <laughs> he's not hid from the Lord. Oh, we can't see him yet. We had two this week. Roger is a granddaddy now. Alex Christie, our administrator, is a granddaddy this week. Amen? Come on. Beautiful. They just get to see him now. But God could see him all the time. It was not hid from him. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect... Yeah, maybe the baby when it's first conceived, no, it ain't all together, it ain't all perfect. But it sure is a child and it's coming together just like God designed it to. Amen? In the image of God. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. This is written in a book. God's book. Life. Amen? So, we're talking about the story of Moses. Y'all right so far? We ain't got to his mama yet, but we're getting there. Come on. Enter. Say it with me. Jacobed. Aren't you glad your mama didn't name you Jacobed? I wouldn't mind. That's a pretty good name, right? Jacobed. What's your name? Are there any Jacobeds in the building? <laughs> Think about it. Jacobed. Mo's mama. Her name was what? One more time. Her name was what? I asked the staff this week. They didn't know it offhand. One more time. Her name was? Here we go. I just like saying it. Jacobed. The person who had the greatest impact on my life is Ann Clark Riley. My mama. That's the last picture of my mama that I saw when she was alive. She made that dress with her own hands for my brother Terry, who you know his wedding and I saw her and I rode home with her unusual that I would just be with my mama riding home about 30 miles just me and her in the car together what a time I had with mama the influence she made on my life she was a leader she was strong mama was strong can you say that with me she was a she was a doer one more time she was a what a doer. She was a doer. How many say that word? That person's a doer. You ever said that word? That's a word we ought to get back in our vocabulary again. Amen. Say. Be a doer. She was a people person. She was a waitress at Revel's Barbecue Lodge. And boy, she lit that place up. I tell you what, here's a, here's a point for leadership. Ladies and men, if you're a server... You love those people and your pockets will be full. You hear me? Yes or no? Your pockets will be full if you love those people. You work hard. You, do it, you be a leader, be strong, be a doer, and you be a people person out there serving those tables. I'm going to tell you something right now. You, you're going to have a pretty good wage as a waitress. Amen? Or a server. She was humble. Didn't bother her at all to pick up something by the road. Nothing at all. She was glad to do it. Hurt me the other day. I was going somewhere. Had to be somewhere, and I forget what it was in the road, but I had to go. I, I, I couldn't turn around. I was hurt for a while. She taught me how to pick stuff up from the road. How many have ever seen me somewhere picking up something in the road? Can I see your hand? I love you guys. Thank you. Be on the lookout. Mama held her head up. Mama didn't walk around like this, ladies and gents. Mama held her head up. Mama looked you in the eye. I love that about my mama. We're learning some leadership this morning. You didn't know all the women that's going to show up in the message, did you? Pua and that other lady, I forgot her name, Jochebed. and got her yet, Mama. She cared for her children. That's what mamas do. Amen, yes or no? Amen? Come on. As a young child next to Mama were my older sisters, Janice and Ann. More women today. Janice and Ann. On our opening day, when we opened this building, my two sisters came all the way from Rockingham to be in our church service. And that's not what they do. But they were here and I didn't even know they were coming. Wow. It was incredible. 
They raised me while mama worked. They were 11 and 12 years older than me. They raised me while mama worked. They loved me like their own child. These two sisters of mine loved me like their own child and they still do today. I'm still getting little gifts. I'm in the hospital. When I went back home this last year, I wasn't feeling that well. I get admitted in the hospital and there comes my sister Ann bringing me pajamas. Because that's what you do in the South. They show up with pajamas. I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Amen, come on. My sisters, I had to say yes ma'am and no ma'am to my own sisters. They were older than me. They were taking care of me. They could whoop my tail. Mama's at work. Hey, you're in charge. Wear it out. These women led in my life. Amen. And women can lead and women do lead. Say that really loud. Women can lead and women do lead. And to be honest with you, one of the last organizations or what do you want to call it to get on board with women being leaders is the church, especially the conservative church. The church I was in, women, you could work in the nursery and you could work in the kitchen. At Fellowship Church, guess what? You can work anywhere. Come on, praise the Lord with me. Anywhere and do anything. Amen. Say Come on, beautiful. Let's go. There would be no Moses without Moses' mom and sister. And we're flying now because I got Roger's flashing lights. And there went a man of the house of Levi and he took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And Amram took Jochebed, his father's sister, to wife. And she bare him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were 137 years. Keep looking. Jochebed's name means, say it with me, Jehovah God is her glory. So you might want to name your baby that. That's a pretty good name. And the women conceived, and excuse, excuse me, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. That does not mean if you wasn't the prettiest baby in the world, she would have. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. No. It doesn't mean that at all. She just loved that child. When she had that child, she just loved him. And when she could not longer hide him, so for about three months she hides him. Can you imagine living in that society with a crying baby and that pressure? She took for him an ark of bulrushes. She made a little, small looking, little boat looking thing. She dabbed it with slime and with pitch. Some kind of substance that would help it not to take in water and put the child there and then she laid it in by the the flags or like the cattails by the river's bank now watch this woman and his sister stood afar off do you think moses mama had something to do with that say yes or no you think she's part of this whole plan you think she left anything to chance no we're learning about leadership today. And his sister stood afar off to wit or to watch what was going to happen with him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself. Do you think Moses' mama knew Pharaoh's daughter was going to come wash herself like that? Absolutely. Women know stuff. Say that with me. Women know stuff. One more time. Women know stuff. And don't forget it, she says right down here. So she knew. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Her maidens walked along by the river side. And when she saw the little basket or ark among the flags or the cattails, she sent her maid to go fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby's crying. And she had compassion on him. Pharaoh's daughter. This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his what? Right place, right time, on purpose, all planned by Mama Jochebed. You understand? Then said his sister, Whoop, Shall I go and call to you a nurse of the Hebrew women 
that she can nurse that child for you? Because you can't do that. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go, yes, that's a great idea. And so the maid, or Moses' sister, went and called Moses' mama, which is her mama. Have I lost you? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give you what? Women are smart. You mean... Earlier today, I'm nursing the baby and I ain't getting no money. Later in the day, I'm going to nurse the baby and I'm going to get paid for it. <laughs> Smart. I'll give you wages. And the women took the child and they what? Nursed it. And the child grew. Say this part with me. And the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. Pretty much done with the story. We saw a lot today. Let's backtrack now and see what we can learn about leadership. And it's not going to take that long. She bare him. She bare him. She bare that child. That's what women do. That's powerful, isn't it? Honor your father and mother. Especially your mother. You hear me? Yes or no? Yeah, but, 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 but she brought your tail into this world. Hush your mouth. Amen or oh me. She bare him. She hid him. She hid him for three months. Jacobed. Keep looking. She placed him. She bare him. She hid him. She placed him in those cattails. She nursed him with what? With pay. She continued to love him, to nurse him with pay. And the hardest thing Jochebed probably ever did was give him to another woman. How hard would that be? Y'all hear me? Yes or no? She gave him away. Jochebed. Can you imagine her pain as she watched her little boy enter? The arms of another woman. Her little baby. Her little boy. This is Jochebed. There would be no Moses, guys. The greatest leader, perhaps, who ever lived. There would be no Moses. Without mama. Can you say mama? One more time. Mama. You'd think it's Mother's Day here, wouldn't you? Jochebed could have fallen into depression. Guys, we're talking about leadership today. Depression happens. But guess what? I'd rather not get that way. Amen? Yes or no? Hard times happen. Leaders have to lead. You have to do. The world's not a perfect place. What's that got to do with anything? The baby! going to live. Amen. She could have fallen into depression. She could have become angry at God. So many people do. They're not, they're not, that's not leadership. To get angry at the God who loves you, who gave his son for you. It happens. I'm not going to make excuses for it because that's not leadership. Are y'all hearing me? Yes or no? She could have become angry with God. She could have tried to fight the system. She would have lost. That's not what she did. But you know what Jochebed did? This is a woman of God. And her sister, by the way. His sister. Say it with me. She chose faith in God and what? This is what leadership does. Look at that. Say it with me one more time. She chose what? She chose faith in God and then she chose some what? Faith without works is what? Dead, the Bible says. Jochebed was a leader, guys. She had a real faith in God. That's who she was. This is not that hard to understand today. We're just laying the groundwork for this series of, about Moses and momentum. She trusted in God for the things she could not control. Say that with me. She trusted in God for the things she could not control. My mother's favorite verse, if you know it, was this. Romans 8, 28. Say it with me. 
And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You know what mama was saying to me when she would quote me that verse? She was saying, we're going to trust in God even when we can't see what's happening because God is a good God and it's going to work out, Gary. Amen? She was a lot like this lady. She planned for things that she could what? She planned for things she could control. Guys, I like praying. I'm all for praying. But how about get off your tail? That's what leaders do. Amen. Say, get up. Let's go. Come up with a plan. Let's do something. Well, we just pray about it. <sighs> That's why the world looks at the church like we're crazy. Work. Work hard. Amen. Yes or no? Come on. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. The three of us. <laughs> Come on. She prepared the basket. She waterproofed it. Effect. Do you think that basket had a chance of getting a leak in it? Yes or no? Do you think it had one chance of that baby going down in that river? Absolutely not. That mama had waterproofed that basket. Now, if you left it up to daddy, baby would have sunk. <laughs> telling you. Come on. She placed the basket in a strategic location in thick reeds, in thick reeds, preventing that basket from washing away. You think she took any chance with putting that baby in that, in that, in that river? You think she thought about it, 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 knew exactly where she's going to put it, exactly where she's going to put it, exactly where she's going to put it. That baby ain't washing away. Come on. Close to where the princess would be, but far enough away to avoid suspicion. Are you seeing Jochebed being a leader? She shouldn't just be passed over when we read the scriptures. Well, I got to get to Moses. No, you don't. Hold on. We're going to stay with Jochebed for a while. Be no Moses without his mama. She would watch and wait. She petitioned Miriam to help. Miriam, Moses' sister. She would watch. Do you think Miriam have a, had an option here? Yes or no? You think Miriam had an option? Well, mama, no, I got to go be with my friends. You think that was an option? Yes or no? You think mama would have choked her and knocked her head off? Yes or no? Say. Yes or no? Miriam knew mama killed me. I can't do nothing but at 3 o'clock. I got to do this. You know, whatever. I got to go be with down by the river. She petitioned Miriam. Wait, pop it back up. She would watch and wait for exactly the what? Appropriate time to make a what? She's just, you know. She's waiting and then leadership, leadership. Are we learning anything? I think we are. Mo's mama. This whole event was planned. Keep looking. Say that with me. That's what? One more time. That's what? Well, we'll just wait. we get around to it. Plan your day. Get up. Plan things. I told you next Sunday. I'm going to tell you something. We're going to do something. It's a plan. I hope the plan works, okay? I believe it will. And guess what? If it takes longer than I think it's going to take, guess who's going to keep working? Amen? Because if something's right, something's right, and we ought to do it. Amen? Plan, man. Plan and work that plan. As much as Jochebed could do, she what? Say that one more time. As much as Jochebed could do, she what? Amen. You know, I've heard so many women talking to me today. I appreciate it. It's not that the men aren't. The, men, the women are just all over this today. Aren't you today? Yes or no? Because this is you. I mean, you're relating, aren't you? You're hearing this. This is, this, is, this is what you would have done, isn't it? You're seeing this. Good. Nothing with her plan was left to what? That's my son. That's my son. Amen. Leaders with true faith. Trust God to handle the problems beyond their control. And they think through the rest, asking God for guidance. We can't do it all. We need faith. But we need to do what we can. Amen? This is what leaders do. And by the way, this word that I just described... Trusting God, but doing what you can and guidance. It's called a fancy word. It's called what? Wisdom. Leaders have what? Wisdom. Leaders aren't perfect people. 
But most leaders that can lead, whether you like this, that, or the other about them, somewhere along the way, they got some what? Or in the country, we call it this, some smarts. Amen? That's what leaders have. That's what leaders have. That's what Mo's mama had. She had some wisdom. Because of her, both she and her children, she and her children were used mightily of God. Amen? And we're going to see that. And she bare, uh, excuse me, and she, say it with me, and she called his name Moses. Pharaoh's daughter called him Moses. Why'd she call him Moses? Because I drew him out of the water. I guess that's what it means. Moses, because I drew him out of the water. Amen? His name would be Moses, which means drawn out, but it was also prophecy. Not only was he drawn out of that river, but providentially Moses would be the one God would use to do what? Draw the Israelites out of Egypt. So God had all this going, but it took a woman named Jochebed to have faith and to work the plan and to get some other people helping. Someone who was condemned to die, Moses, someone who was condemned to die would be placed in the very palace that had once condemned him. Moses. Jochebed was a great woman. I know her as Mo's mama, and she was a true leader. Amen? Are we done, Raj? You're killing me. I never see this till Sunday morning. I haven't seen all this stuff he did. Can you say it with me? Mo Mitchum. Let's praise the Lord for his word this morning. I think we got off to a good start. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen? I like this. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.